was watching um this nation my favorite one of my favorite shows and and I was noticing that um on this notion each one um their personality who they are comes out rather than rather than um like before corona um it's a whole dish nation scene Frank and Heidi still have the dish nation scene personality image that's probably a a more better word but um after corona we can see here the um scene is is um Portia's personality her image is pulled through the screen to us as you can tell you can still see that it's Dish Nation because she has the Dish Nation microphone and the Dish Nation logo so with all that said I thought it was I just thought it was very interesting when I was sitting here watching which I I noticed it when it, when Portia first came back on Dish Nation. Her um her background, I think it's lovely. That color, it kind of is kind of her skin, which in my skin tone is the bronze. Also, when I have on um when I wear it's a bronze dress that I wear and shoe, and I know they put the, oh that matches your skin tone. Oh that's you. But I know people love to see me in bronze or brown um, fashions. So, we see Portia's uh, personality is what we're seeing. And same with um, Brett. And we see Brat has the Dish Nation behind her, but she also has her computer. She has her um, keyboard and all of that, which is her personality. And we, and we see Brat personality pulled through. And these people, Brat and Portia, you can actually see the inner beauty in these two ladies. Who they are, Brack actually being herself. Because on here, we see she hit it on Heidi. And talking about she has a new mix called, um, um, what she said, that thing, um, Hoodie in My Thongs. Telling Heidi she, uh, sitting in thongs. And, and Portia got up and showed that she was sitting in her stretch pants. And she had that nice, she, and when she leaves, she pulled her lashes wig off and, and her shirt off, and she go work out of whatever she going to do. But from the waist up, you, um, they are professionals. From the waist down, they are home and comfortable. So that is what this um, New World Revolution is about. In the beginning, there was agriculture in the 1800s. Around 1914, 18, 19, by around 19, 18, 19, the Great Depression, the stock market crash, ushered in a whole new revolution called industrial, the industrial age. Now we see the industrial age coming to an end coming to an end. So when I think back, my mama born in 1938. So agriculture was still here in the South for her. And then when she left the fields, she went to work at the um the Holiday Inn. And she been a Holiday Inn for many, many years. Cause um 
when I got turned 18, I got out of high school and turned 18, she brought me to the hotels, you know, to show me her job, how to clean the hotels and all of that. I thought it was fun. But you got some jealous people worrying about me being out there. Oh, she got a daughter here, so she would hide me in the room. And then people would complain, oh, she got her daughter here. You know how I, um, we race of people is always worrying about what we're doing instead of letting us live our life. So she couldn't let me come out there because cause, cause they're coming down on her because she got me there. She training me. So I guess it wasn't for me anyway because I thought it was fun cleaning those rooms. I probably would have. I probably would have owned a hotel by now. <laughs> Because I'm that kind of person. I believe in my own business. I would have found some kind of way to turn that into my own business. But you got people, women back then, jealous. But you can have other people. They bring their kids out there and train them. But you know, with that um mindset... You can't help your family. Just like when I tried to raise my kids to be entrepreneurs, had them cutting grass. Oh, you know, if they get hurt, you can this and this can happen. I'm like, I'm right here. So it's against the law to train your kids to work. So that kind of like followed me out. My mama wasn't allowed to train me to work because of women. She worked with don't have a clue. And then me and my husband, we bought our home and everything. Training my son and, and my husband and nephew. You know how to be on your news. Cut grass and make that money. Next thing I know, this um, Caucasian guy came over there. Oh, you know, if the kids get hurt, this happened, that happened. I'm like, okay. You're not allowed to train kids to work. So what are these kids supposed to do? Then try to get them hired out of store. Oh, they got to be at least 16 or something. But you see these young 13, 15 year old at the store being trained. I'm like, okay, I see what this is. So I trained my kids anyway. I bought some candy, become their manager. They had them selling candy every summer. They always had their money. So they're going to make some money somehow. Anyway, they're going to be trained somehow. And I trained them until they got tired of selling candy. And so they got, they got that create your own business entrepreneur mindset that training is there so when they get to the place where they are um with this with this um system now that the coronavirus is, is ushering in these kids already got it so it won't be nothing for them to work from home like brett those like brett and portia they work for this nation but they're at home their own personality which is what a lot of YouTubers and Facebook and Instagram and all these other um, social media um, platforms, what they're doing, work from home. My daughter, she um, she, she she's a hairstylist. She has a um, company set up online. Um, she um, got her own business where she signed people up to go to take these training classes where they train them two or three weeks to create their own business like she did and work from home. This is the time. And she still got her business, but you know, you got people that don't understand nothing, but now that Corona has shut down the whole planet and Mother Nature has put humans in time out so she can heal. And... We got time to sit inside, and I noticed with the time out that um, and I can tell when other people are um watching my videos, because um Dr. Moonby, she mentioned that um we we're in time out, and I went back and checked, and I saw that was five days ago I put that video out, and now she's saying um Earth is in time out, but I say Mother Nature has um, us in time out. Because humans was bad little people. You destroying the earth, just like children. You tearing the house up, won't sit down, won't be quiet. Getting time out. So, Mother Nature just put us in time out. And why are we in time out? What is happening? The new world 
um, workforce, which is the technology, because we went from agriculture, industrial, and now we're in technology. So you're going to sit. I did a video on remote. I just uploaded that video on remote workplace. This is the remote workplace. Portia is working from home. But the thing about it is she's not, she's not remote working from home, such as um, Facebook offered me a job years ago where I could have sit behind my computer and work with, um, you know, remotely work behind the scenes for Facebook. But I was so sick with MS back then, I just couldn't mentally function. And I'm coming back from that because I'm noticing um, my voice and my ability to speak is getting better and better. Especially when the corona hit, I'm feeling more comfortable in speaking, even though I still have some speaking issues. But I'm getting there. So... That's all I want to say about this video is the fact that this is, um, this nation, um, where it's, um, it has hair crack. Hair crack has the whole dish nation behind him. Cause I find out from listening to, um, well, Juicy put Gary on, she put Gary on blast that everybody call her, but Gary. So she put Gary on blast, and I noticed Gary had his, he's sitting at his, um, he's sitting comfortable on his chair. Like, I have me a chair, and I sit comfortable when I do the, when I do my Zoom, um, Zoom meetings, uh, with, because I'm the, um, um, Jehovah Witnesses have, uh, moved their entire meeting to Zoom. Everything that was done, going to the Kingdom Hall, going out in field service, it's literally moved to Zoom, where there's no even there's no need for a building. This is what is happening. All of these buildings that the people meet in groups and go to, and I don't know if the church, the church seem to have a having a problem figuring that out. At least some of them, but um, it's moving inside. But just because it's moving inside, it, that does not mean we have to have a whole entire office set up and we just stuck in this room all day which is this house some jobs been you got to be in this room for so many hours if you leave out that room there's a signal that let the person at the um like the i think um at the i think this guy was working for um blue cross blue shield or some other company if you leave out they know when you leave they got some sense of, i'm like okay why in the world would i want a job like that not never that kind of job. If you leave by if you leave by the office space, they know it. I don't got time for that foolishness. That is not the kind of um work from home that I thought was good. I thought that was crazy. But this right here, like I said, Portia, she works for Disney Nation and she's at home being herself. Then you have Brett at home being herself. And you see Gary at home being himself with his big old brim hat on. And Heidi and Frank. They're just, they still let the studio, nothing changed with them. I don't know what up with Chewy. Maybe Chewy could be working from home, right, portion, but I don't know. But I'm looking to see what his um, home setup is. And then, Head Crack, he has the same setup as I'm. I think Head Crack at home, too. But Head Crack has that total destination behind him. Yeah, and back to Juicy. Juicy um, said that Head said that when the Ricky Smiley morning show moved to Dallas, and and Tom Jenner retired. She said the whole entire morning show was built around head crack. I didn't know that. Hmm, interesting. So y'all can look up um thing about Juicy. It's, it's a very heartwarming story she tell about why she because I was missing Juicy. Well, where is Juicy? But I figured I said, well, it'll come out eventually, and it did. But anyway. That's all I want to say about this video. Um, the fact that um, we've gone through three um, um, revolution movements, economic, the workforce, every hundred years, because I think it was 1800s, this was agriculture for centuries, I guess, centuries, 
and then in the 1900s after the um after the great depression stock market crash which back then was a money grab money 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 grab with all of these um these um private owned banks or these billionaire people where they see which bank is going to be the next bank to run things I think um I did some research on it and I kind of I kind of understand um how these things work then you went and then that ushered in um the industrial plants you're going into the plants you're going inside you're going into um doctor offices, you're going into supermarkets, you're going into um, every kind of business company they got they have right now that are indoors, the movies, you got you um you got those corporate like Netflix corporate, all of these um companies got corporate offices so everybody's inside. The IRS is inside. Now everybody's inside. So now, hundred years later, you know, back then it was the Spanish flu, because there's always some kind of, back then, I don't know if it was a pandemic or um, epidemic, epidemic. Anyway, it was an epidemic um, in the United States, so 100 years ago. Now we got the coronavirus, and what that is doing is ushering in a, the stock market, a stock market crash, which, is, which to me, don't seem, it don't seem too much like the stock market crash, because... Back then, everything was zero out. But the stock market done crash a few times. But now, the stock market crashing, but I the stock market crashing, but I don't see the stock market crashing as far as companies go. What I am seeing, though, and I did an article on the oil, the fact that oil for the first time ever in history, oil prices is zero. I think it's, Thirty five, sixty three dollars or something negative for gas prices where you got um these um gas companies, um, like OPEC and I think OPEC and whatever those one is, they are paying companies and I wanna think the companies that they are paying, the buyers that they are paying, it's like Exxon and Shell, those type companies paying them to buy the oil. Because they pumping out, steady pumping out, and there's no demand. Because the plant is on shutdown, everybody's inside, nobody's going anywhere. Except for a few that's going and working back inside. Nobody everybody's inside. So but you steady pumping out oil. It was because of, and then and still trying to trade it and sell it on the stock market. So there's that war up there going on among them while we sitting down here figuring this coronavirus out. Still, you got different people figuring out how, finding ways to make money, create their own business around this. So now we are in the world of real ushered in. So all of this has ushered the planet into technology, to technology workplace, uh, work from home, and... There will need no that there will be, like that the AMC movie theater streaming thing, they filed for bankruptcy. Freezing their money so they can figure out this thing. Like the article said, if you did not um invested in technology twenty years ago, you will be replaced by remote workplace today and if you don't have remote workplace today you're going to completely be replaced by replaced 20 years from now by companies that do so right now everybody's scrambling trying to figure it out and humans are very Intelligent, creative people. People may think black people don't don't know what to do, but you, you, black people know what to do. Black people been surviving forever. The world has been a recession, depression for black people.
forever. So with this new recession, falling into depression, whole planet shut down. Mother Earth has a whole planet in time, has human beings who are doing the most in time out. While human beings um, just sitting back, freaking out how to make their money. This is a medical um, crash. So what are you going to do? Everybody worry about the coronavirus. All business is going to be surrounded but it's going to be surrounded around medical issues. And I hear that um, YouTube is taking down channels of people who tell people you can take vitamin C or a homo with whatever this show, herbal way of, of, of healing the coronavirus. They're taking your channel down because you go to what the CDC say. My thing is, why are you making a video telling people how to do that? Tell people. I see people. Oh, the 5G. They're going to find you. This girl in the store, she all of a sudden, they 5G, they're going to make us sick. We're going to get sick. I tell that girl, I say, uh, if you feel sick, take vitamin C and some vitamin D. You live through it. But if you had <laughs> it's going to get you. Because first of all, you may have some, some, Decrease immune system and not know it. But she's a young girl. And I saw her. I went back in there and saw her. The girl was full of calm. I'm like, you're going to live through this. If you go going to run around terrified. Oh, I'm going to get a test. Or the test too much. Or the test. Or the test. I can't afford the test. Why are you worrying about a test? Is she sick? People get the flu. And ride it out all the time. But if you can't breathe, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother thing. Because my sister went through that last year. She couldn't breathe. She just woke up one morning and couldn't breathe. And we got the news, because she and her, um, uh, and her sister in the living home, and we got the news that she was in the hospital. We went to the hospital, the girl on a ventilator. She's not on a ventilator because a ventilator and a breathing machine, to me, is two different things. A ventilator, to me, is a... um. Especially they put you in an induced coma. My brother-in-law was on a ventilator. And they would take him off the ventilator, you know, wake him up, whatever, because he had breathing issues. And his was um, deemed um, natural causes. He died, um, what, January this year? Natural causes because he smoked cigarettes and he would um, have trouble breathing this and that. And he, whatever he had, he had that issue. But uh, her, she just all of a sudden couldn't breathe. So we went to the hospital. She is on a um, breathing machine. Those breathing machines, they put their mask on your face and they did like that because she couldn't breathe. When we went there, she had the um, oxygen in her nose. And she would eat and whatever. And then she would put the oxygen back in her nose and she would eat. And then she started fussing. Tell me, oh, but I can't catch my breath. Ah, oh, boy. I said, you can't breathe? Me, no, I got so I called the nurse. I said, she seemed to be having trouble breathing. So the nurse come around and she said, well, do you need the breathing machine? She said, shake her head, yeah. So she put her back on the breathing machine. And she was on the breathing machine a whole day before we even know she was in it. And then they finally put her in a room. And so she was on the breathing machine. Then after about a week, she went home. She don't have any issues now. So I don't know what that was. But my thing is, I don't, even, I, I don't get the... I don't get the thing about all these uh, ventilators. You can't breathe. Why are you on a ventilator? To me, a ventilator, especially if the tube go down your throat, and a tube, what kind of throat? To me, that's a uh, what do you call it? That's a um. What do you call? Well, I, I forgot to call. My mama was on it and she was sick. When they put the tube down your throat, that thing is to, um, I guess, to save your life and put you in a coma while your body heals. I guess to you to that point, you need a ventilator, yeah, but if you, if you got trouble breathing, my sister just put on a breathing machine. And she, that way, she don't have to breathe. The machine doing all the breathing for her. I got pictures of her like that. Because I haven't seen anything like that. But anyway... 
That's where we are today. The planet is on shutdown. The planet is in timeout. Mother Nature is tired of humans doing the most and giving human beings time to figure out why am I doing the most? Do I really have to continue to do things the way I've been doing it? Are there other ways I can sit back and take care of myself? Right now, this is normal for me. This shutdown, is way, it, it has been my life since 2008. That's been my life. Home. Don't have friends like that. You, you know, I have associates, people, you know, I guess I'm friends with. But they are not, I don't have real friends where I can call, I can call her, hey girl, let's go. I don't have no friends like that. Oh, I need a, I'm a ride to doctor. I don't have friends like that. Period. I've tried it. I don't have, I, I don't have friends like that. So if I need to go anywhere, I got a husband. He take me where I need to go. Or I take myself back then. And I'm just always a lone, isolated person. That's just my life. That's been my life all my life. But as a child, that's always been my life. So I'm basically who I was since I was born. Quiet in the earth, don't have no friends. You know, like to be around people, like to have fun, dance, joke, and whatever. I can't joke because my joke is so dry, it drives people crazy. Why don't you be trying to have fun, lighting stuff up? But anyway... Instead of panicking about this coronavirus, do what you need to do. Follow the um, guidelines, the stay at home, all the instructions and rules that your state has, because each state is different. My state don't have a shutdown like that. Stores never close. Well, um, the mall is closed. But you have the I you have the Boost Mobile, the Lens Crafter, and the Roses that's in the mall is still open. Everything is shut down. And I heard that the other day they were told they could open back up. So now I'm going to check and see if Belk's open back up. Because I paid my Belk's card off with my stimulus. Because my thing is, if you get money, it's for investing. You pay stuff off. I pay off Victoria's Seekers and I pay off Belk's. Only thing I have now is my overstock car, and that's because I'm buying, I'm buying my electronics and and, and stuff like a, and stuff that I um, I can't go in the store and buy it. I go in there, it's there, whatever. Pay that off. I got some stuff coming right now. My son ordered a laptop with his stimulus. Um, I ordered a clothing rack because I want to take clothes out my closet and hang clothes on that rack that. I can just go, you know, from here and pick up what I want to hear. And they got a little rack under the bottom. And I ordered a um, generator. So those are things that I needed. And so that's what I did with my stimulus money. I invest my money. I didn't take my money. Oh, I'm going to go shopping. Oh, I'm going to party like a lot of people did. And I, think, I don't think a lot of people doing that. I think a lot of people taking the stimulus check and investing. Doing what they need to do. At least the space that I'm in, I live in a certain space. And my space is not, it's when I see stuff going on, I don't internally understand it. They say, oh, you just don't get it, or you don't have feelings for people. It's not that I don't have feelings for people. I don't get it. Because not only do I not live in that space, I never lived in that space. I wasn't even born in that space. I was born in nature, in the woods. This is where we were born. Back in the um, 1960, we were born. My mama said, all of y'all were born in nature. We weren't born around people. There were no people. The only people was us. And the animals and the insects and the chickens and the hogs that I didn't want to feed. And my daddy had to feed them after I saw a hog ate the little grunt, ate the little runny pig, and then that was traumatizing. I'm still traumatized today. How you eat your baby? Ugh. I don't care if you're an animal. I don't care if you're a pig. Whatever it is. 
I'm still traumatized by that. And that happened when I was like two. Hmm. I was very young. Probably around 16, something like that. 13, 14. Traumatizing. I've been traumatized since then. I saw, I still traumatized my um, My sister had a baby and they put her in an incubator. And she was gasping for breath in a little incubator. She only weighed one pound. And I went to see her. That was traumatizing. Because that reminded me of the little pig. They just, the mama ate the pig. And now they put in a little incubator and this lady baby died. It was a human being. I'm still traumatized by that. And I've been traumatized by things since, but I'm kind of on one hand. But anyway, in a new day, the world, will, the world as we know it, as we knew it, is no longer. We are moving into the world of technology. And those who are aware and those who are human beings that are humans being on this earth and not human doers doing on this earth the most. But anyway, that's it for this video and I will see you on the next video. Bye.